Hi class. So today I'm going to introduce another way to split up a cake between three people. So if you remember last time we talked about what was called the Steinhaus proportional procedure. And today what we're going to talk about is the Selfridge Conway procedure. Now, this was a procedure that was invented by two mathematicians, Selfridge and Conway. Uh, they actually arrived at it independently, um, so both of their names are credited to this procedure. So why are we even bothering to look at another way to divide up cake between three people? Well, the Steinhaus proportional procedure was already a way to divide up cake proportionally between three people, but we did have a problem. If you recall, player one could actually envy the new division. And when you're trying to divide things up fairly, I think it's really important to do it in a way that doesn't cause envy, right? Envy is the root of a lot of issues, a lot of arguments. So if there is a way to divide up cake that will not cause envy between the three people, um, then certainly we should sort of strive for that, okay? And what's nice about the Selfridge-Conway procedure is that it's both proportional and envy-free. In that regard, it is sort of strictly better than the Steinhaus proportional procedure. That being said, of course, it is going to be a little bit more complicated than the Steinhaus proportional procedure. We're going to have to take extra steps to remove envy where we didn't have to do that before. So what I'd like to do is just give you a list um, of the instructions here. And so you can see that there's two stages. There's a first stage where we divide up the pieces, but we're going to be left with what are called trimmings. And there's a second stage where we need to divide up the trimmings in order to make sure that there's no NB. This is a slightly more complicated division procedure, so I think it's best to just jump right in to a visual demonstration. You should make a note of this, uh, of this list of steps right here to refer to during the visual demonstration but I think it's probably going to be easiest if you see it happening while I'm explaining it. If you're asking whether or not this is the same cake as last time, the answer is obviously no, that would be disgusting. So here we go, we got this cake in front of us and let's divide it up three ways using the Selfridge-Conway procedure. Again, I'll play all three characters and there's going to be kind of a lot of swapping around so I'll try to make sure that we can keep track of who's doing what. Just like before, this procedure starts with player one dividing the cake into three equal parts. So let's say player one decides to cut up the cake as follows. We have the two pieces with the flowers. And we have this third piece of just all cake. And again, player one has made this one a little bit bigger to compensate for the fact that it doesn't have a flower. Okay. The next stage is that player two comes and doesn't pick a piece or doesn't even approve of pieces. What player two does is they examine all three pieces and they find which piece they like the best and they trim it down so that it is identical in value to the second best piece. So let's say player two comes along, right? looks at those pieces, okay, those are nice, uh, looks at this piece over here, okay, that one's probably the best, all right? Player two just really likes, again, size over anything. And so since this one really sticks out to player two as the best one, player two is going to trim it so that it's as good as the other ones, right? So again, so player two looks at these shapes, says, okay, in order for this to be equal to those two, I need to take off about this much. This is a, this is a trimming, this is the trimmed piece, and these two are the original pieces, uh, one and two. Say. So now, player two thinks that all three of these are equal. 
Player two maybe still values flowers a little bit, so this one's maybe slightly larger than this one, but player two didn't think that it deserved to be this much larger. So now what happens is that this trimming is set completely aside, and these are the new pieces. Two original pieces and one trimmed piece. The next person to go is player three. Player three just comes along and says out of these three pieces, not including the trimmings, which one do they like the best? And they can choose whatever they want. So say they like this one the best, that's great. Okay, they'll just put that aside. Right? If they instead like this one the best, they can take that. Maybe player three doesn't care about flowers at all, so just wants this piece over here. All right? Fine, player three can take that. Now player two gets to choose from two of the remaining pieces, this one or this one. Say player two decides that they like this one a little bit more. This one will, will go to player two. This last piece over here goes to player one. This concludes stage one of the process. There is something to note. If player three does not choose the trimmed piece, then player two must choose the trimmed piece. In this example, where player three did choose the trimmed piece, player two could choose either of those two pieces. But if player three had not chosen this piece and had instead chosen this piece, then player two would have had to choose the piece he trimmed. Now what's the purpose of this rule? The idea is that player one shouldn't get a piece that was trimmed from. Because player one thought the pieces were all equal to begin with, if player one was left with a piece that had some cake trimmed off of it, then player one would feel like they were getting less than one third of the cake. So there's just this small rule that player two must take the trimmed piece if it is available to be taken. Now before we move on to stage two, I want us to take a second to think about why nobody is envious of anyone else at this stage. So player three is not going to be envious because they took the piece that they thought was the best. Player two is not going to be envious of player one because player two gets to choose before player one. Now why isn't player two going to be envious of player three? Three got to choose before them. Well this is where that trimming process really comes into play. Player two trimmed the top piece to be equal in value to the second piece. So Player two caused a two-way tie between the pieces. So player two thought that these two pieces were tied. Now, no matter which piece player three takes, player two is still left with a piece of equal value. So because of the trimming process, player two does not envy player three. And why does player one not envy either of them, even though they both chose before player one? Well, player one thought that all the pieces were fine to begin with. In fact, player one thinks that whoever took the trimmed piece is actually losing out, that they didn't get a third of the cake. So player one is definitely not envious of them. And for the other pieces, player one thinks that all of them are of equal value. Now what's the point of stage two? Well, we've trimmed some of the cake off, and right now nobody's getting it. So we should try to find a way to make sure that all the cake is eaten, right? Otherwise, this is not an optimal cake division. So let's try to give out this last extra piece. So stage two is all about this trimmed piece. Now we're going to reassign player names. Whomever, so for this next stage, we're going to reassign roles. Instead of player two and player three, we're going to have player T and player N. Player T is the player who took the trimmed piece, and player N is the person who took the not trimmed piece. So in our example here, player three is the one who's player T now, and player two is the one who's player N. The first step of stage two is that player N, whomever did not take the trimmed piece, is going to divide the trimmings into three equal parts. So in this case, again, player two is player N because they did not take the trimmed piece. They take a look at this cake and they say, I'm gonna split it into three. These are the trimmings. And we want to make sure that they think that all three of these little pieces are the same. So here, player two, who's player N, 
divides it into three equal miniature slices. All right, we've divided the trimmings. Now, player T, who took the trimmed piece, gets to take back whichever of these three pieces they like. So say they think that this one's the best, they'll take that and they'll add it to their pile. And then player one gets to take a trimmed piece, player one likes that one. And then player N, who did, who did the cutting of the trimming, is left with whatever's left. And there you have it, we've divided up the cake between three people, we divided up the trimmings between three people. All that's left to think about is why is there no envy even after the second part where we redid the trimmings? So let's have all these trimmings back in there. Now player T again is the first one to move. So they, whatever they take they think is the best out of the three so they will not envy either of these other two pieces. Now, player one goes next, so they will not envy player two, or player n in this case, and player n is stuck with this last piece, but player n doesn't care because player n did the cutting of the trimmings. So to player n, each of these three trimmings was equal. So player n is not gonna envy anyone else. The hard case to justify is why doesn't player 1 envy player T because player T got to go before them. So player 1 could think that this trimming is better than this trimming, in which case player 1 would envy this trimming. But even if that's the case, I claim that overall player 1 does not envy player T. And so why is that? Well, let's take a look at how this all began. Player one cut the cake into three pieces. Remember that these trimmings came off of this piece. So player one thought these three were equal. So the fact that some of these got taken off means that player one thinks that this piece is much less than the piece they have. In fact, even if all of the trimmings went to T, player 1 would only think that they were tied with them. So since player 1 thought that this piece plus all the trimmings was equal to its own piece, even if they think that this person got the biggest of the trimmings, it doesn't matter because player 1 still sees this as larger than these two combined. And so this is the really clever way in which the Selfridge-Conway procedure ensures that there's no envy throughout the entire process. And there you have it. We have two different ways to divide up cake between three people. One of them's a little bit easier, the Steinhaus proportional procedure, and one of them's a little bit more complicated, the Selfridge-Conway procedure, but is able to eliminate envy. You can take your pick, which one you want to do at home. Although, again, I highly recommend you try to eliminate envy when you're dividing these cakes. Cake envy is a nasty thing. All right, have a good day.